Yeah. So let's go to question number three. This is from Cross Bearer. Oh, I just realized I forgot to put our, our, our counter up. I can do this real quick. If you guys will just give me one moment. And I promise not to break anything this time. <laughs> All right. So here's our counter going up. Oh, I didn't even turn on my lights. Look, I have not done a video with you guys in like two weeks. A live one anyway. Look at that. Did you even notice that that was missing? Look at that. Oh, I'm such a terrible YouTuber. I'm so unprofessional and unorganized. And I don't really care. All right. So that was question number two. Let's go to number three. From Crossbearer1413 it says, In Acts chapter 8, how did they know when the Samaritans had and had not received the Holy Spirit? Pentecostals teach that it must have been tongues. Is there another explanation? So let's go to Acts chapter 8. And we'll look at the passage. <laughs> Sorry, I just I just added a tra an accidentally added a transition. So now you guys get to see. Watch, you get to see it. Ooh, ooh, fancy. A really cheesy. It's like old Star Wars transition. All right, so we've got Acts chapter eight, and it says, um, "Um, are you sure you wanted eight? Was that the right chapter that you're looking for?" Let me see. You got to make sure you guys double check your questions because. You know, I like to go to the passages in, in mind, and I don't have the entire Bible memorized yet. Next week, next week I'll have it all memorized. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, could it be Acts nineteen? Mm, mm, maybe. I mean, it might be Acts nineteen, but but that's not that's not. We're, we're talking here in Ephesus. That's that's a different location. So. Let's just read through it here and see if maybe I'm missing something that's here. Um, probably I am. But there was a man named Simon, right? Simon the Magician. We read about him. He was a punk. <laughs> he was a punk. And uh, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them <clears throat> Peter and John who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them. And they received the Holy Spirit. Now, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. Okay, this is a separate issue. The important part probably for your question, I'm going to read it again, is, is just this part right here. Um, they hear the word of God. They get baptized. But the Holy Spirit has not fallen on them until the apostles show up. They lay hands on them. The Holy Spirit falls upon them. I'll notice a couple things here. Um, it, it, at least off the cursory reading right, right now. We're, we're not seeing tongues related to this. Okay, and I think your question is is related to tongues. So you asked in Acts chapter 8, how did they know when the Samaritans had had, uh, had had and had not received the Holy Spirit? Pentecostals teach it must have been tongues. Is there another explanation? Um, so what we don't have in scripture is a clear answer to my knowledge on this passage. Uh, maybe if I read more, I'd see something I just don't remember off the top of my head. Um, no, they pretty much, they pretty much leave <laughs> after that. Okay. I'm just skimming. They pretty much leave right after that happens. So there's nothing specific. It is true that in the book of Acts, tongues is often the evidence of the Holy Spirit in someone's life, but not always. Do you catch that? Not always. The thing about tongues is that tongues is a spiritual gift. And so when someone speaks in tongues, especially Acts 2, known tongues to the people around them, this is strong evidence of the work of God in their lives. But tongues is not the only spiritual gift. And so we have also prophecy. And Paul talks about how prophecy is even better. What if they prophesied when the Holy Spirit came? What if when the Holy Spirit came, it was like Acts 2, where there were just actually physically visible uh, manifestations to demonstrate the Spirit was coming upon them? I say what if because I don't know the answer, but that's a possible answer that's consistent with the context of Acts. So I'm going to give it a, I'm going to put it as a defeater to those who say it must have been tongues. You're forcing that on the text of scripture at that point. Perhaps it was just a spiritual awareness that they had and the disciples had. When when the apostles lay hands on them, they go, wow, we can, we, we just are spiritually, we feel the Holy Spirit is coming upon them. They feel, and maybe there was no manifestation of a gift. I don't know. That's also a possibility. So yeah, there's, there's all sorts of possible answers there. I think that what Pentecostals sometimes do is they want to use this as a proof text for tongues when it's not about tongues. It's about, uh, it's about apostles. <laughs> it's about the apostles. Um, the, you know, okay, so he, let me tell you about a problem in the, in the first century and how Jesus solved the problem. Okay. The problem, and this is what I think is the background of Acts 8. 
The problem is that once Christianity goes out into the world, people have all their own random opinions about it, and they change it, and they alter it, and they come up with bad doctrines, and they call it Christian. I mean, we see it today, right? This is the thing I, 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 I guard my own heart and my own mind, test myself with scripture to make sure I'm not doing. Well, in the first century, it was even more chaotic because you have the Holy Spirit working wildly in people's lives, and you don't have a full, completed New Testament to hold people up to. So what you do have is the apostles. And so the way Jesus assures that people won't distort his message, twist and change the, the, the Christian teaching, is he puts it in the hands of the apostles. So that the Holy Spirit comes with the laying on, hands, on, the, on of the hands of the apostles. That way, those who just got saved, they know that the official messengers of the, of the truth of Christianity are the apostles that just laid hands on them. This guy Simon wanted to be able to do it. That would then make him the official. That was the whole Simon the magician guy. Him the official guy who could then tell people what Christianity really believes. Now we see this late in the first century and into the second century and even into the third century. There and the fourth, I guess. The um, the church recognized that it was not just any old Christianity that mattered. It was apostolic Christianity. This is why the New Testament was canonized, or at least we acknowledged the the canon. We didn't make it canon as the church. We just acknowledged what God had done because we saw that the teachings of the New Testament were from the apostles and the apostles were the official like makers of the the infallible faith of Christianity or like the, not the makers because they didn't make it, but the official deliverer, deliverers of it, right? Jesus says that they will, he will guide them. The spirit will guide them in all the things that they teach. So we have them, um, the Holy Spirit's limited to their hands initially, right? Laying onto their hands as a way of proving their apostolic authority, which then is carried to us through the word of God, through the New Testament apostolic letters and, and writings so that we will then stick to the text of scripture and not think that we can uh, do whatever we want with Christianity. So that's what I, th I think is going on in Acts chapter eight here. It's the apostles as the, as the guarantors of Christian doctrine. It's not about tongues as the only evidence of salvation. Tongues never comes up in that passage.